Before we get to New Man Journey in the book, tell me about Men's Golf Fellowship because that's what led you to this. It what is. is it all about? Like, yeah. Because I, we had a conversation on the phone, and I wanted to know if you can improve my golf game, and that wasn't what this was about. It's not. No, I wish there was a direct connection between uh, my involvement level in Men's Golf Fellowship and my golf game. I see no correlation. <laughs> yeah, I, and I have to be honest, I've tried prayer too. I'm not sure it works for that. <laughs> you know, it, maybe it does for others, but it doesn't for me. <laughs> me either. <laughs> what I do pray for is a good attitude on the golf course uh, and and that I won't allow a bad golf game to get in the way of a good time with friends. Amen. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I pray for that. Absolutely. The fellowship part of it. Let's yeah. explain that a little bit. Okay. So um, Men's Golf Fellowship, uh, our, our mission, very simply stated, is growing in faith with golf friends. It might sound like an oxymoron, uh, but to me it sounds like the most simple and natural thing in the world. Uh, golf friends, for people who are golfers, are amongst your best friends. They're the ones that you look forward to being with on Saturday. If you're retired, it's more than Saturday. Uh, it's a group that you bonded with over the years and, and who, with whom you have affinity. You've chosen them as the guys that you want to be with. And your friendships are forged, typically, around secular things that we have in common such as interest in politics, such as uh, interest in dining and and markets. And sometimes we talk about our former business lives or if we're still working about what we're engaged in, our families, our children, our grandchildren, in uh, the case of retired golf friends. But rarely do you turn to the guy in the golf cart next to you and say, so how is it with you and your faith? Uh, It's a non-starter. And yet, Faith is one of the most fundamental, foundational, uh, and important dimensions in the lives of many of these men. And so I thought when I had more time available after uh, retiring from, or semi-retiring from business, that I would take a shot at opening that dialogue. And that has led to uh, an organization called Men's Golf Fellowship, where in Naples, uh, in Bonita Springs alone, southwest Florida area, we have over 1,000 men actively involved now, 12 years later. So I would have to ask you, Steve, um, have you always been a man of faith, or did you come to your faith? I came to my faith uh, when I, the year that I graduated from college in 1970. Something happened? It did. Um, I had been uh, not particularly interested in God up until about a year or two before I graduated from college at University of Connecticut. Um, I was uh, a party animal. Uh, God wasn't high on my priority list. Um, I wasn't raised in a religious home. Um, I came from mixed marriage. My father was Jewish but had long since abandoned any interest in his Jewish faith. My mother was Catholic and believed, but wasn't active because it would have been problematic. Uh, So I was uh, nowhere. Um, But a couple of years before I graduated, I started to become curious because it was the 60s, and there were... um, Uh, all kinds of influences that opened up my eyes to the possibility of spiritual matters. I got involved with yoga and transcendental meditation. I followed Swami Satchidananda, and I became very interested all of a sudden. uh, So could we call you a hippie at the time? I was full-blown. Think Woodstock. Think hair down to the middle of my back. Imagine me with a at 160 pounds with a leather headband. That's the picture. Uh, so yeah, I was a hippie and that is what opened up my interest and, and to make a real long story short, um, I was on my way out to, after graduation to the Integral Yoga Institute, uh, in San Francisco to enroll, uh, with Swami Satchidananda, who was my guru 
at the time and a guru of many of my generation. And my goal was to be a yoga teacher. I thought this would be great. And But before I left, I prayed to Krishna, who was my name for God at the time, that if I was on the wrong path, that he would direct me to the right path because I knew this was the rest of my life. So I stopped in a little town called Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, which is about three hours from, and which I know Lord you know well, well because my you wife's were in, from Reading. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I uh, stopped in Bethlehem, and I went into this little church, and it was uh, late afternoon. And I went in, and it was a chapel, and there was nobody around, and I had to do my yoga exercises, which uh, I had to do every day. And this was my opportunity, and I, which conclude with standing on your head for 10 minutes to let the blood properly flow through your chakras, your energy centers. I'm not into this stuff now, but that was my disposition that, that, at okay, the time. i, I got to ask a question. Yeah. What kind of church was this? It was a little United Church of Christ. It was okay. a you well, know, Christian church. So you went into a Christian church to do your yoga? Uh-huh. Well, it was a chapel. It was available. It was open. And I needed a, I needed a spot. Okay. Uh, and But when I was there, I went up and I started reading from the Psalter, the Psalms. And I thought, wow, this is really interesting stuff. Never read it. Didn't know anything about it. Never, never had that, that acclamation. Went back out into my van and I started to have my dinner. Don't which tell was me it was a Volkswagen van. It was a VW camper. <laughs> How did I know the image? Of course. <laughs> With imagine the smell of incense coming out of the you know you know oh, incense my. sticks and and Ravi Shankar Indian music. So your and, movie heroes were Cheech and Chong. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Those no, no, were okay. that was, that was a wrong joke. model. <laughs> And 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 I and I and I was eating my vegetarian dinner with you know a, a, a peanut butter and and green pepper on whole wheat natural bread you know the whole <laughs> enchilada, and suddenly I saw my face in the rearview mirror of the van, the skinny gaunt person with the headband and long hair who was literally a completely different person than the person that I had been up until two years prior to that. And what I thought at that time was, you've lost it. Something happened along the way, and you just took a bad turn. And I was scared to death. And I prayed. And when I prayed, I was filled with this tremendous peace, like nothing that I had ever experienced through yoga or meditation or LSD. And that was Christ. And that was the beginning of my Christian conversion, and that was 44 years ago. Wow. Wow. An interesting story. We're mm. going to find out more about this because uh, we're going to get into the book New Man Journey that Steve has written, and we'll talk more with him after the break. Welcome back. The Art Lewis Show for a Wednesday morning in studio with me is Steve Silver, the author of the book New Man Journey, Finding Meaning in Retirement. So we found our religion in this little chapel in Bethlehem and in your Volkswagen van, if you will. I guess I have to finish the story by asking, did you ever make it to San Francisco? No. No, I actually, instead of uh, going and enrolling in the Integral Yoga Institute, I enrolled in Moravian <laughs> Seminary in Bethlehem. <laughs> <laughs> you, you never left no. Bethlehem then? Huh? Well, uh, I stayed in Bethlehem a year. I spent my first year in uh, at Moravian Seminary, uh, and then I went to the uh, um, um, University of Edinburgh in Scotland, which is the Church of Scotland, uh, for my second year, and then my third year at Yale Divinity School. And then I... Wow. went into the business world. All right, so I have to ask, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it is it is one thing to find God, that entity. Um, it's another to find a religion. How did you find the religion as opposed to finding God? Well, I didn't find a religion. I found Christ. As opposed to an organized yeah. religion. Yeah. Of course, Christ is lifted up and represented and articulated through the Christian religion. But then there's many denominations of the Christian religion, Catholics, Presbyterians. I happen to have been connected to the Presbyterians at the time, uh, but it really doesn't matter. As long as it's a legitimate Christian religion, which discusses the, the, the fundamental core principles of, of uh, of um, Christ's uh, death and resurrection and saving power, 
it doesn't really matter where that's uh, expressed. You're just going to churches to fellowship with people. And it never mattered to me then, and it still doesn't matter to me today, where I attend church. It's more a matter of who I attend with and do we believe and share the same common faith. That's fascinating because I have discussions on this program once in a while with the uh, hierarchy of various de- denominations. Uh, and it always seemed to me as an outsider of Christianity, being Jewish, looking at Christianity and looking at the way the various faiths and religions conduct their business, I, I often wondered if the dogma of the church got in the way of the faith. Mm-hmm. And if you understand what I'm saying, uh, we have all of these various denominations, all fundamentally, as you put it, the same, believing in the same basic principle, if you will, yet they're, they're so different in some ways. And it, it always intrigued me as to whether the, the dogma of the church interferes with the, with the basic fundamental belief of the church. You know, I don't think that the dogma of a denomination interferes. I don't think it's an issue of the of the core denomination so much as it's an issue of the local church. All right. So let's talk about the book, which is okay. what we were supposed to talk about in the first place. Yeah. But I always have my way. Um, New Man Journey, Finding Meaning in Retirement. What brought you to, to sit down and write this? Well, um, Men's Golf Fellowship is comprised of a 10-week uh, speaker series where we bring in really world-class speakers for breakfasts where anywhere from two to 300 men attend every week, 10 weeks in a row. And with a couple of banquets on the bookends at the beginning and the end where wives are involved as well. And, and that's, that's sort of what we call the main tent of Men's Golf Fellowship. But then during the week at private clubs throughout the Naples, Bonita Springs, and Fort Myers area is actually up to over 20 clubs now. Men are then meeting in their own clubs, in their clubhouses, discussing God and life issues, the challenges that face men at this stage of life, and what does faith have to do with all of that. Learning, growing, discovering together at various uh, places in their, in their journey, including Jewish men, by the way, in that conversation. Um, I would hope so, because oh, faith sure. is faith, whether it's in Christ or just in God. Correct. Faith is faith. Yeah. Now, this is this is a Christian organization, but some of our best conversations are with our Jewish friends. Uh, we may not agree that Jesus was the Messiah, but we agree on very many other things having to do with well, absolutely, uh, because Judeo-Christian you, you, you values, etc. To the New Testament, unless you go through the Old Testament, you can't so. get to Jesus unless you come yeah, through exactly. the Jews. <laughs> <laughs> so, there we are. <laughs> Glad to have provided you. Uh... <laughs> and I'm very thankful for the line of uh, Jesus' her- her lineage and for <laughs> God setting up this great, great people, the Jews, to bring forward His Messiah. Um, and uh, so in these discussions, we often talk about wanting to be better people, wanting to do the right thing, not wanting to be angry, uh, not wanting to, you know, um, be unforgiving, not wanting to hold grudges, the stupid things that hang us all up. You know, y- you do them, I do them, we all do them. But what we do is we talk about how can we get past that? How can we get over that? Well, the new man journey deals with that topic. How do you transition from old, unproductive behaviors that have plagued you your whole life to a place where you really, those are put to death and you're free from them and you're a new creature and and you have a whole different mindset, value system, orientation, and where you used to be angry, now you're at peace. Where you used to be hostile, now you're not. And, and the new man journey is based on the hypothesis, which is biblical, that when Christ comes into your life, at whatever point in time that is, that there is a regenerative, renewing process that begins and takes place over the course of your life. And the progress that you make is the journey. That's what that book addresses. It's, it's a, I think it's an interesting um, bit of timing. And by that I mean uh, 
pre-retirement, you are saddled, unless you own your own business, you're saddled to the wishes of others. Especially if you own your own business. <laughs> and if you own your own business, you're saddled to your own business and the right. things you have to do to make it succeed. Right. When you retire, you're free of all those chains. You're free of all those bindings, if you will. And now you're on your own, and your only master is you and your God, you know, depending on your faith. But, but you really do now control your life totally, don't you? Retirement is, in fact, an opportunity to start afresh. And, and what I have found is that men are more receptive, but they have other chains, as I said, that they have to deal with at that point in time. Uh, the question I would have, though, that comes to mind are typically the men who come to your golf fellowship program already of faith, strong faith, believers, if you will, before they even get to you? I think that the profile is um, the, the, that would be the minority. Really? Mm -hmm. uh, I would say the majority are what I would call traditional Christians in the sense that okay. they would call themselves Christian, they attend a church periodically, they might even be Christers, which is our term for they, they attend on Christmas and Easter. <laughs> <laughs> and and they have a membership, but 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 faith isn't really important to them. They don't right. read the Bible. They don't pray with for their family. They don't pray for their family. It hasn't been integrated into the warp and woof of their life. People like that, we don't see a lot of those on the front end, but on the other side, after a few years of discussion groups. We see many more of those <laughs> because they come thinking that what they had was everything, and then they start getting into conversations and realizing, wow, I, I don't know as much about this as I did other areas of my life. I want to learn. We're going to take a break. We will be back with Steve Silver. The book is New Man Journey, Finding Meaning in Retirement. We'll talk more about it when we return after these notes on The Art Lewis Show. Welcome back here on WSGW, The Art Lewis Show. We're talking to Steve Silver, the author of the book, New Man Journey, Finding Meaning in Retirement. So when you get a group of guys together who are now retired, looking for meaning in retirement, where do you begin? When our groups meet, they meet with a very explicit purpose, and that is to explore together what faith means for them at this stage of life. They know that coming in. They They're know not it coming surprised. in. They know it coming in. They know in. it coming in. They know that's the agenda. Now, they don't know where the conversation is going to go, but the conversations are ones where any man can equally participate because we all have a common experience. So let me give you an illustration. There's no man who could be in a group who wouldn't be able to relate to the, especially if it's retired, the topic about how is it with marriage after you're, the kids are gone and you're at this phase of life and you've been married 40 years, how is that compared to the earlier years and how is that going for you? Um, who wouldn't mm -hmm. have the ability to engage in that? Or um, topics that are sensitive such as alienation from a particular son or daughter or a particular son or daughter who's in who's gotten off the grid and is lost to the world something uh, you relate to something from the 60s? That we can all relate <laughs> yeah and something we can all share in common those are the topics that we discuss versus you know what's your opinion on the trinity <laughs> okay all right so if i break down the title yeah new man journey mm -hmm. Are we talking about a new man on a journey, or are we talking on a new man journey? The latter. You're talking about a journey to the discovery of the new man that's inside of you waiting to be activated. So it's both, in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is both, in a way. Uh, because, because we all, uh, and here's the problem, we all vacillate between an old unproductive man inside of us and a new healthy man inside of us 
uh, ask our wives, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ask our children, yep. and they'll say, how is it that you could be so terrific one day and then all of a sudden, you know, a switch goes off and you say <laughs> stupid things that are hurtful? How could both of those things come out of the same person? Yeah. Well, but they do. Try saying the, that to your wife and see what happens. <laughs> well, and the idea here is to have more of the good and less of the bad. <laughs> and, 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 and I believe that, that of course, as a Christian, that, that Christ, who is the ultimate new man, who, in whom our new man is modeled and regenerated, that we have power to make this transformation without which it's a pretty tough slog. And that's the the great catalyst and benefit that we have. So I have to ask this, Steve, and I yes. think I might have asked you this on the phone when we talked a couple of weeks ago. How did golf get involved in this? Was that simply the tool to bring people together? Golf was my world that I was engaged in for many, many years, and my golf friends were the group of friends that I most enjoyed being with. Back to that group of friends again. It's together. the friends. It's the, the, you know, it doesn't need to be golf friends. I mean, pick your group. It could be uh, tennis friends. It could be fishing friends. It could be the people you most look forward to being with and hanging out with. And in the guy world, you know, we are male bonders, and, and when we're together, we have a different kind of fun and interest and, and camaraderie than we do when our wives are around or when we're with other couples. We're different. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, so, and so for me, that just happens to be my male world is the world of golf. I should ask this, and I should have mentioned it before, too. Where is the book available? Just thought I'd mention it's, that, you know. <laughs> it's available in uh, many bookstores around the country, and Barnes & Noble yeah. and elsewhere. Uh, there's not a whole lot of bookstores left, but you could well, pick we got this Barnes book. And Noble right down the road. You could pick it up at Barnes and Noble, and if they don't have them available, you can order it from them, and they'll get right. it in. Uh, Amazon.com, uh, any you know, um, BarnesandNoble.com. It's readily available, and it's also an audio book. So I did a, a narration of the entire book, and that can be downloaded through Audibles. And com. do you have a website? Do it's www.newmanjourney spelled out dot com and on the website are many of my uh, radio interviews tv interviews and articles that i've been writing ever since the, i wrote the book on various topics related to this were you a writer have you done a lot of writing in your life i wasn't a writer and i always had an inclination toward writing and when a publisher asked me if I'd be interested in writing a book related to my experiences with Men's Golf Fellowship, this book came pouring out. And, um, and now I've been writing articles, which I love writing, seven, 800-word uh, articles for a variety of magazines and newspapers, and et cetera. And that seems to be something that I'm going to be doing for a long time. We'll be back with more with Steve Silver, the book New Man Journey, Finding Meaning in Retirement. Welcome back to the Art Lewis Show. We're talking to Steve Silver. New Man Journey is the book, Finding Meaning in Retirement. We have a caller, Steve, and this is David, who is listening online out in California. David, good morning to you. I, I heard him talk about golfing, and I, I find it kind of hard to you know, fathom the idea of Jesus in the, uh, on the fairway, so to speak. So I'm just, uh, you know, wondering about, uh, you know, what sort of advice are we getting? I, I'm particularly an environmentalist, and I, I, you know, hang around with people that are scientists and uh, and people in, uh, interested in being into stewardship of the earth. So I'm wondering if he has an aspect of stewardship of the earth, or if it's all about golfing and business. And or is it about golfing? It's not about golfing, and it's not about business. And it's not about the environment. And it's not about politics. Um, and uh, I, nor any of the folks who are involved with Men's Golf Fellowship, subscribe to providing advice on any of those topics. Um, the only advice that we have to those who come uh, seeking it is how they can grow in their personal faith life. And that is not so much advice as it's shared exploration uh, with each other in our, in our discussions. Um, as far as finding it difficult to fathom, 
Jesus on the fairways, um, I think that I'd ask you to take a look at the life of Jesus. Uh, he was where people were. He was at parties. He wanted to be where his friends were. And I absolutely uh, believe that, that Jesus would have been comfortable walking down the links uh, with a group of disciples or friends that he was with and enjoying time and fellowship with them. And I think he still does that. Steve, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Art. I really enjoyed our time together. New Man Journey, Finding Meaning in Retirement.